Hi, I'm Michael and welcome to Tamil Movie Studio. Today I will show you anatomy of Karanuri and some very similar techniques to Karanuri based on the exactly same principles or the principle of Togidashi. So applying some structure on the pan and then some other layers and sanding down to reveal the pattern created by the structure. Uh, here at the beginning I'm showing finished pens, all, almost finished pens during the Uvazuri. And right now the last uh, step, uh, maybe not the last, but the most critical step, which reveals the pattern. So here is the sanding and polishing, but the most important and the most revealing uh, moment I will show at the end of the movie, so please watch to the end. Or just scroll to the end. Uh, to see it and uh, I will talk about uh, techniques used, types of urushi, additives to urushi, tools you can use for creating such designs and some things about uh, color and pigments and other additives. So in a moment I will show you a short presentation so for the first time in our uh, journey through YouTube and Urushi. I will show you some slides. I used to make a lot of slides in my life, but it's something completely different this time. And let's go through this now. So on the first slide, you see the base. So it's shown as wood. And on the top, you will see how it looks from top and the cross section is obvious. So now we apply the base layers. Uh, I will not describe them because it's not a topic of our uh, movie today, but base layers. And now Karanuri. Um, so these splats, those thicker urushi, those, this, this design, this pattern is shown here as black. And now we can cover it with different colors, but here I decided to show gold, well, yellow, uh, but it's a layer of uh, gold powder embedded in Urushi, and then a color layer. I simplified it to just two layers over the Karanuri uh, design uh, pattern. And now with this dotted line, this, this dashed line, I showed what happens when we send it. So the dashed line is the level down to which we send. I marked the part of Urushi we remove uh, with sending and I will show this sending later. And now what we get, and you have, you see the background with uh, some design, some pattern, but they were applied in a different uh, order. So first the pattern was applied, then some other parts of the pattern, and at the end the background, so completely upside down. Now I will prepare the mixture for Karanuri. A uh, very similar mixture is used for many other techniques to, based on the same principle. So the idea is to thicken the urushi, to thicken it, to make it uh, not drip, not flow, and be more sticky, more viscose, and uh, just thicker. But at the same time, not to let it wrinkle, and uh, so it must not flow and must not wrinkle. So we have to add something, and this something is usually some water and protein to simplify the, uh, uh, this. But this water and protein is usually uh, something edible. So it's sometimes gelatin, egg white, uh, can be fresh egg white or uh, dried egg white mixed with water, tofu, uh, milk, soy milk, and uh, some other stuff. And you can also add uh, pigments on the different stages of mixing this, uh, this mixture. And usually the amount of those additives, especially those containing water, so stuff like uh, gelatin or egg white or uh, tofu, does not exceed 20%. Uh, usually it's in the range of between 5 and 20%. I use usually around 10 for typical Karanuri, for some other um, patterns, some other ideas I have. I use different amounts, sometimes even much more. 
uh, close to 2025 20, and uh, on top of it some pigments but uh, be aware that Urushi with too much thickener added and too much pigments added becomes weaker. Uh, another thing connected with this is it cures much longer and it should be cured in a uh, low humidity. So you add a thickener, you can apply thicker, um, maybe not layers, but thicker um, spots, thicker uh, splashes of uh, urushi on the substrate. But at the same time, it uh, can be cured in lower humidity because you add water. So it uses this water contained in egg white to, to cure also. Uh, but to slow this process down, you have to cure it in lower humidity, so below 70%, definitely below 70%, and much longer. Uh, for thin layers, and in case of Karanuri thin, is I, between uh, 0 0.2 and half a millimeter, and it should be at least a week. And for fecal layers up to two millimeters, because it's possible to apply two milliliters, two, two millimeters uh, layers uh, with uh, such uh, additives, uh, up to three weeks. Uh, here I mix another type of urushi. This one is pigmented. The previous one was black, was just a, a kuro roiro, and without any additives, high quality kuro roiro. And this one is my uh, mixture of uh, blue, so it's uh, my own pigmented urushi. And I add some very fine silver powder to this. And it's not the silver powder you can buy in Japan, because it's even finer. Uh, this silver powder is used in, in gilding sometimes, and it's not powdered Le go, uh, silver leaf like in Japan, but it's uh, uh, produced through chemical reaction, so it's extremely fine. Actually, I, if I would uh, um, blow on it and put a fire to it, it would it would uh, combust. It it would uh, it would uh, it would burn in uh, in the air. It's so fine. So I added some silver, now I'm adding some uh, aluminum, and this is aluminum powder, it's called uh, El Genio. Uh, it's uh, like 350 grit uh, of aluminum powder in blue color, so that's uh, anodized. And now I'm adding much less egg white than in previous mixture, so it's something around 5% only. I do not plan very thick layers and I want it to cure pretty fast and I already added some thickener, so those two pigments, those two metallic pigments, I added to Urushi. Very important thing is to mix it really well. You will observe that the consistency will change during the uh, during mixing and mix it for quite a long time, with at least 10 minutes. I, I speed it up just to save some extremely boring uh, footage and I'm mixing it and I will gather it in one place on my plate, I will cover it with a cup and I will remix it in several uh, minutes again, and then in an hour, and then in an hour. So I will keep it probably for two to three hours on my plate, and I will be mixing from time to time and checking the consistency because it will be changing all the time. Uh, during each mixing, uh, I check the consistency and uh, mm, how Urushi flows. It should drip from the spatula or from uh, from the uh, from the knife you use it you use for mixing it should drip in triangular shape so it not form a thin uh, stream uh, but it sh should form something like a curtain some a triangular shape and should drip very slowly so I will mix both pigments again, and then we could... Uh, it's second mixing, I think, or third, I will probably mix it again uh, a little bit later, but I will not be showing all the stages 
because it would be boring as I said. And uh, I will use both Urushi today on pants, but it's quite difficult to show uh, this live uh, with my camera, so I will show it on a test plate. So I prepared a test surface, which is white, and I will show different uh, tools and different techniques of applying this thickened Urushi uh, to your uh, substrate, to your base. And here we are. So first uh, I will show you two traditional tools used in Karanuri, so Shikakebera. So it's a uh, usually made of horn or a wood or metal or sometimes plastic and I 3D printed mine. I got the SL STL files from Mireya and on Instagram and uh, I made them smaller than typical uh, shikake uh, used for bigger objects because fountain pens are small. So I made them smaller, I modified the surface, the under, under surface, surface of both of them and I will keep modifying it because I want to uh, get something uh, which is really useful for fountain pens. Uh, you have to um, practice a little bit before you can get uh, shapes uh, which remind something from Japanese uh, lacquerware. So this one I have quite... A, I know how to use it quite well. The other one which was designed especially for fountain pens, so it's longer and, and uh, square. Uh, actually, uh, it is not very nice on flat surface. It looks much better on rounded objects because you can um, like put it around the pen. And uh, you have to dip it in uh, Rushi and then uh, like splatter several times on the surface just to leave just the right amount of Rushi on the, on the spatula. Now I show you how to use uh, just a simple sp metal spatula for applying urushi in triangular shape and you can modify the thickness of this urushi with the amount of urushi you have on the spatula and the shape of the spatula and the pressure you apply. And now the uh, skewer stick, so just a piece of wood, thin piece of wood and you can use it too. You can use a toothpick, uh, you can use a fork, you you can use brush and pointer brush or just normal brush. Actually, the, mm, the Hakeme Nuri is using very same, very similar mixture of Urushi and some thickener and uh, stiff brush. And when you paint on this on the surface of such thickened Urushi with such brush, the brush marks will not disappear. Here I show how to use the edge of the of the straight spatula, the plastic one, more flexible and easier to use. And I will apply just the straight lines of thickened Urushi on the surface. Uh, you can use it on pen too. And another idea is to spread this mixture on the surface uh, with the spatula or even with the brush spread it and then scrape it. Scrape it with the spatula or uh, some other tools. I will use scalpel in a second, uh, like bent knife of the scalpel to show you that it's possible to use, well, any tool imaginable. And Here it is, slightly different effects and then you can use the same scalpel and the Rushi on it to create some other patterns, some other shapes. Quite interesting shapes you can create using a sponge or just a paper. Hmm. 
can show you how to use just simple lint-free paper. You take the uh, strong paper, just not to make it uh, tear. Uh, during the application, fold it several times or, or crimple it and form a shape and then apply Urushi with such a tampon. You can change the shape and use just the corner. You can use rubber stamps, you can use wooden stamps. Uh, it's, I've seen uh, Tofu Flower Studio, I think, making it uh, with a rubber stamp. Okay. So now I'm left with a lot of cleaning. But first I will show you some basic application of such mixture on the pen. I hope it will be visible uh, here. I will use the stick, so the simplest tool imaginable, just a wooden stick. And I will apply different thickness uh, dashes of this mixture on the pen. Some of them will be longer, some of them will be shorter, and you will probably see this pen later uh, on my Instagram. But today I will show you a pen which is made uh, with very similar technique and uh, Hiroshi was applied uh, in exactly the same way. So uh, it will be kind of a fast forward to finished pen. What is, what is interesting is that uh, when I watch, uh, when I see Japanese lacquerware and I watch Japanese masters and craftsmen, Urushi craftsmen at work, I think that they are sticking to some traditional designs and uh, much more interesting and much more crazy stuff and, and uh, uh, some discoveries and creative use of Urushi using exactly the same techniques, but just changing shapes, just changing tools, just changing thickness or the sequence of application of colors and pigments uh, you can see in Europe or in the United States or in Asia, but not in Japan. Uh, maybe I just don't know enough and I don't know enough uh, Rushi artists, but uh, especially in some regions like Tsugaru, they stick to traditional techniques and traditional way of doing things very much and it does not differ in technical uh, way. It uh, will look differently, so you can use different colors, you can use different shapes and apply just to Rushi differently, but use exactly the same formula, exactly the same technique, exactly the same layers and exactly the same curing process. Okay, so now we have a cured pen, fully cured pen, and pen which was later covered with numerous layers of uh, Urushi and gold. So I used several colors of um, Urushi and I uh, called pigment, a uh, gold powder. And I will use a, a whetstone for sanding it because uh, the surface is not even, it's not smooth. Uh, they, those, um, places, I showed it on the presentation, uh, they are they are sticking out of the surface, so to sand it with the sandpaper I would have to glue it on some flat surface, uh, not to sand through the background, I just want to um, sand to the layer I plant as a background. In this case it's an orange layer and I have to sand through partial of red layer which is on the surface and get to the orange layer and cut through those uh, um, hills of uh, Urushi of different color built on uh, those dashes I showed you a moment ago. I increase the speed of sending, not to bore you to death. Uh, it takes some time and you have to be uh, cautious and uh, careful not to send too much. 
and uh, this pen is pretty safe because it's quite crazy combination of colors so uh, one tenth of a millimeter will not play a huge uh, maybe not tenth but one five thousand five hundredths of a millimeter will not make a lot of difference but still I have to check uh, how it looks like after each pass around so I clean the pan I check the surface I look for the areas not sanded enough I look for the areas which are susceptible to be over sanded and change my technique and speed or pressure in those areas okay it's exactly the pen I show you at the beginning. I will show it again right now here. And I made another one with same colors, but different shape and different application of this um, thickened layer. And this time it was applied to the whole surface of the pen and scratched with spatula. So this parallel uh, vertical lines are made this way and those horizontal lines are made uh, using the stick and the technique I showed you seconds ago. So that's it for today. Thank you very much and please like this video, comment if you have something to ask or just a something to share and uh, Subscribe if you did not subscribe yet and share this video to help me out with YouTube algorithms. Thank you. Bye.